To write equilibrium constant expressions, just remember concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants, and coefficients come exponents. This means Kc is equal to Co multiplied by O2, as these are the products. Co has a coefficient of 2, so it has an exponent of 2. This is then divided by CO2, as this is the reactant. CO2 has a coefficient of 2, so it has an exponent of 2. Also, this reaction is considered homogeneous since everything is in the same phase as gases. Because everything is a gas, this reaction could also be written as Kp. Kp is written basically the same as Kc or Kq, but instead of concentration, P is used. P stands for partial pressure. So Kp is equal to the partial pressure of products divided by partial pressure of reactants, and coefficients still become exponents. For this reaction, the equilibrium constant Kc or Kq is equal to the concentration of H2CO3 divided by the concentration of CO2, products divided by reactants. They both have no coefficients, so they have no exponents. Technically, they have a coefficient of 1, but that means they have an exponent of 1, so we don't need to include that. Now, H2O is not included because it is a liquid. Liquids have constant concentrations throughout the equilibrium reaction, so we don't need to include them in Kc or Kq. Also, this reaction is heterogeneous because we have more than one state present or phase present. Aqueous, liquid, gas. Okay, so I think you get the gist of writing equilibrium expressions, but look at Kc. It doesn't include CaCl2 because it is a solid, and solids, just like liquids, the concentrations remain almost constant throughout the reaction. So Kc is just equal to products, but you can also write it as divided by 1 as a placeholder for CaCl2 solid. Also, make sure not to confuse the charge as an exponent. It happens to the best of us. This expression can also be written as Ksp because we have a solid dissociating into aqueous ions. Let's write equilibrium expressions for the following reactions. In yellow are tips to help guide you, so you can pause this video and try these yourself or you can work along with me. So first, we don't include solids or liquids. We have no solids or liquids in this reaction, so we, we include everything. Kc is equal to the concentration of products divided by reactants, and coefficients become exponents. This is the product side, and this is the reactant side. So we have H2 to the power of 3, because it has a coefficient of 3, multiplied by CO, and this will be divided by the reactants, so CH4 multiplied by H2O. They both have no coefficients, so no exponents. Also, since this is all gases, we can write this as Kp. Kp is written almost identical to Kc, but instead of concentration with the square brackets, it will be P. So we have pH2, power 3, PCO, PCH4, and PH2O. Now for this reaction, let's look if there's any solids or liquids. Aqueous, gas, gas, liquid, aqueous. H2O is a liquid, so we won't include this in Kc. Kc is equal to the concentration of products divided by reactants, coefficients become exponents. So we have Cl2 multiplied by H2, they both have no coefficients, so no exponents. And lastly, multiplied by OH-, which has a coefficient of 2, so an exponent of 2. Divided by the reactants, so we have Cl- minus, has a coefficient of 2, so it has an exponent of 2. And remember, H2O, although it is a reactant, it is a liquid, so it will not be included. What would the equilibrium expression be for this reaction? We don't include liquids or solids, but here we have a homogeneous reaction, meaning we have all one thing, so we have all liquids. If the reaction is homogeneous for liquids and solids, Kc will include liquids and solids. So for this reaction, all liquids will be included, and if this reaction was all solids, all solids would be included in the equilibrium expression. Let's tackle this practice problem. For the reactions with each of the following equilibrium constants, describe the position of equilibrium as mostly products or mostly reactants. So for this equilibrium constant, it is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the power of negative 10. This negative power will make the answer a decimal number. So just remember that Kc is equal to concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants. And then we can determine which is bigger by doing some sample calculations. So 2 divided by 4 is equal to 0 0.50 and 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. Products will always be at the top, and reactants will always be at the bottom. So we see when reactants are bigger than products, we get a decimal number, and if products are bigger than reactants, we get a whole number. So the answer to this question would be mostly reactants, since when we have more reactants than products, the answer would be a decimal number. For this one, Kc is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the power of 9. This will be a whole number. 
And we can just use the same calculations from this one here. So 2 divided by 4 is equal to 0 0.50. 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. We see that when products are bigger than reactants, we get a whole number. So the answer to this one would be mostly products. So something extra that you may want to know is that only changing temperature can change the value of Kc. For this reaction, if we increase temperature, the reaction will shift left. A shift left increases the concentration of reactants and decreases the concentration of products. So in terms of Kc, the reactants increase and the products decrease. Since this is a temperature change, Kc will also change. Kc is proportional to products, so if the products decrease, Kc decreases. Kc is inversely proportional to reactants, so if reactants increase, Kc will decrease. How I like to remember this is Kc is in the numerator, like the products, so what the products experience, Kc will experience. Now if you want to know more about the shifting and Le Chatelier's principle, I have a video above. If N2 is added, the reaction will shift right, and this will increase the concentration of the products and decrease the concentration of the reactants. However, since this is not a temperature change, the Kc value will be unaffected. This is what I like to call remember notes. It is basically a summary of everything you learned in this video, and if you remember and understand everything on this page, you should be able to write equilibrium constant expressions for any chemical reaction and solve questions related to the equilibrium constant. Don't include solids or liquids unless the reaction is all solids or all liquids. K is equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. Coefficients become exponents. K can be represented by all these other means. If the reaction is all gases, Kp can be used. Kp stands for partial pressure of products divided by partial pressure of reactants. Coefficients still become exponents. If Kc is a decimal, reactant concentration is greater than product concentration. If Kc is a whole number, product concentration is greater than reactant concentration. You can always try this yourself with some calculations. And finally, remember, only changing temperature can change the value of Kc.